or a celestial holiday, whatever uh, made you happy. I hope you had a good one. Today, I'm going to be discussing a guy named Fred Minali, and he is someone that I think of quite a bit in terms of the Zodiac case and how he may or may not tie into everything, but he's somebody that I always come back to. I don't know why, just somebody I'm going to be digging in deeper to is Fred Minali because uh, it's just so much interesting stuff about this guy. And the main reason he comes up is uh, Robert Graysmith, of course, but uh, I'll be talking about that a little bit more in just a little while. But uh, I want to give a shout out to Ned over on Black Box Online Radio. He's got uh, a new episode out. I want to watch it. I just started watching a little bit of it. And uh, I think that one's going to be really good. But anyway... Fred Benali is a guy that's not talked enough about. I did a video on him not too long ago, but I wanted to start out giving a little bit, bit of back, background Sorry, on Fred Benali. And this is from Mike Morford, who used to love uh, the, all things Fred Benali. Of course, Morford used to like uh, Ross Sullivan as a Zodiac suspect, and now he's got his new guy, the guy that lived near the payphone. Uh, McDuff is what they call him. But uh, he also did, did a lot of work on uh, Fred Benali as a potential Zodiac suspect. But I want to read this that he wrote back a while, a while back, Morph did. And it says, Fred Benali and why he is a great suspect. And he's talking about the Zodiac case, not uh, the, the uh, Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders, which is, he ties into that as well. But he's talking about him as far as being a suspect for Zodiac. And he says, his name came up thanks to Robert Graysmith, almost forgotten about. A little digging produced some simply fascinating facts and par parallels between Manali and the Zodiac Killer. In Robert Graysmith's Zodiac Unmasked, the author tried to link his suspect, Arthur Lee Allen, to Fred Manali, a Santa Rosa junior college teacher who was killed in an auto accident in 1976. He mentioned that Man Manali, during the mid-1960s, had lived in Riverside, California. I and others have found no evidence to support this claim. Riverside is a city very important to the Zodiac mystery due to the Sherry Joe Bates case. More on Bates coming to this blog later. Zodiac writing expert Cheryl Sherwood Morell stated that letters received in the Bates case, as well as the desktop promo found in Riverside City College, were unquestionably the work of Zodiac. If true, that is a major clue to Zodiac's identity. Of course, we know since recently there's some uh, the news report about the... Uh, the Bates letters being hoaxes, of course, we know that's out there. And that was just a weird write-up by the Riverside PD. That, so there's people still questioning if that's even true or not, if they were hoaxed. Because they, uh, the thing Riverside PD put out, the press release, was so poorly written that we still don't know if those letters were hoaxed or, or not. And I think that's that's the uh, the confession letter I'm talking about as far as the, the Bates thing goes. But anyway, uh, that doesn't take away from Manali and why I think he's he's interesting. And I think Morphew goes on to say that he doesn't he never subscribed to the Zodiac being a team or two or three people involved. But he thought that if there was a second person involved, that it would be Manali because there's so many interesting things going on with this guy. And uh, you know, as far as Manali being Zodiac, it's kind of tough because this guy was six three. You need all the photos of him. He's very slim. Obviously, he's tall. Uh, that kind of works against him, and one thing that everyone found out about him, and I think his sister said this about Fred Benali, was he was a terrible stutterer. He had a really bad stutter, kind of like I'm doing tonight, but it, that was just something that he never got under control, and of course we know from the late Barry Essa Zodiac attack that uh, the attacker there did not stutter. Of course, people talk about people that stutter that can sing, like Mel Tillis had a bad stutter, but when he sang, he didn't stutter, so... Uh, people kind of think, well, maybe he was kind of singing like Brian Hartnell said. It kind of sounded like a song or something at Lake Berryessa, so they kind of pass it off that way. But I don't think Manali was the Zodiac, but there are so many interesting things about him, like uh, his writings. They have a lot of his writings. He was a creative writing teacher at Santa Rosa Junior College, and he used the phrase, I shall, a lot in his writings. He was like, I shall this, I shall that. And uh, Morph talks about this as one of the things that he does. He also, I mean, Ali also wrote this piece about paradise. And, uh, of course, Zodiac loved the word paradise. And uh, he didn't use that spelling, which would have been a really big jump out. But he you know, spells paradise the, the right way. But he did write something about paradise. And he also used the word, what is his name? And he ran it all together like the Zodiac did with, you know, W-H-A-T-S-H-I-S-N-A-M-E, where they put, you know, it's you know what's his name but they ran it all together which is which is interesting i would say as far as anybody that is a zodiac suspect 
a lot of the stuff in the letters, you know, is similar to Manalia. It just it just is for whatever reason. Some of the handwriting looks kind of similar. And, uh, you, know, I'd, you know, go look for that on the internet and, you know, be the judge yourself. But it's so subjective. I know uh, one forum that was being talked about, or, but, it, you know, I think Morph put the writing out there saying, oh, look, looks, looks exactly like Zodiac's writing. And I think Tahoe 27 chimed in and said, I don't see any similarities here. So it's, it's so subjective when you talk about the handwriting. But the interesting thing also about Manali was, is that he was killed in a head-on collision in 1976. And after that accident, they found uh, some stuff. I I've heard two different reports. One, he had a van, which is interesting because that could tie him into the Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders. And he is a suspect in, the, in, that, in that case because they found drawings either in his van, I'm not sure, or at his home. And one of the drawings he had was of a lady named Kim Wendy Allen, who was, I believe, the second vic or third victim of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders, which happened in 1972 and 1973. And these were real sadistic killings of girls that were hitchhiking around Santa Rosa. They were found uh, bound and gagged, and some of them had take taken 30 minutes to die, like in the case of Kim Wendy Allen. And uh, uh, the interesting part about Manali is they found drawings of Kim Wendy Allen at his home, I believe. And it, it depicted her in uh, this, this sadoma uh, sadomasochistic position. It's real dark stuff that Manali had. He also had himself drawn in there as like some kind of transvestite or something. And he was calling himself uh, uh, Frederica or something like that. It's really weird stuff. And so that's how he becomes a suspect in the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings. And of course, we know because of Robert Graysmith, uh, Arthur Lee Allen is also a suspect in the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings because of Graysmith's book, Zodiac on Mass. So uh, that's kind of how Manali gets, gets on the, the page for Kim Wendy Allen. And what a big shame is, is that they do have DNA, they say, from uh, Kim Allen from her murder because it was a sexual assault involved with her murder as well. And it was supposedly tested years ago and it just kind of lost steam. No one knows really what happened, if they have a full profile or not. It just kind of, it was submitted for testing and it just really went nowhere. And I don't know why. I mean, you, uh, there were sexual assaults in some of these cases of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings. There's seven known murders in that that are, I guess you would call those the canonical crimes for the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings. But some of them being sexual assaults, you think it'd be like Golden State. Why can't they get DNA from it? Why can't they test the, the Kim Allen DNA, which I know they do have a sample from uh, Kim Wendy Allen's death, a DNA, a, a DNA sample. But the most I could find out is nothing's been done with it. They, they were going to submit it or it never got finished or they're, they're just stalled out for whatever reason. I don't know, which is crazy because it'd be great to find out who it was. Was it Manali or not? One other interesting thing about Manali is I couldn't. I went back to go find the newspaper article, but he was from uh, Illinois, and there was a case of him trying to pick up a girl there in Illinois, like trying to get her into his car. So that's really huge. People should not forget about that about Manali. I, I need to go back and find that newspaper article. Now I might have mentioned that when I did another video on Manali, but he did try to pick up a girl, and and I, I guess she fought him off and got away or whatever, but there that was, uh, I think, recorded in the newspaper about how he did that, and nothing ever became of it. He didn't go to jail because, you know, nothing really happened other than him trying to get her in there, so he could have just acted like, hey, I was just trying to talk to her or whatever, but there was a case of that, so that really makes me wonder if he's a better suspect than people think for the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings. Like I said, with Zodiac, it's kind of tough to get him there because his height, uh, his size. I mean, of course, he could have fell out a little bit more by, you know, after these pictures of him on the internet were taken. But, you know, like you said, his sister said he had a terrible stutter. And I even heard Voight argue in this, why would you try to hide that stutter in front of two people that you intended to kill? I don't understand, you know, I don't know why. I mean, unless he was playing a role or something like that, which also is a good time for Manali because he was in theater. I don't know if he ever did the Mikado, but when he was in college, he was in the theater department and um, high school, he was in his high school theater department. I know that for sure because there's different pictures of him in some of these theatrical plays. One of the shots I even put up where he has a sword to a guy's throat. So that kind of helps his case a little bit for Zodiac. But it's an interesting story about how he might be involved. He had this drawing of Kim Allen, and it's this sadomasochistic stuff. Well, whoever killed her and did the rest of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slang is into this twisted sadomasochistic stuff. And 
that doesn't fit well with Arthur Lee Allen at all. He doesn't. I mean, these girls were murdered. Some of them were, were, were raped. And that's just not Allen's MO. When Arthur Lee Allen got caught for child molestation, it was with 13-year-old boys. I think they were the two he got in, uh, sent to a task at Arrow 4. I think they were 13 or, or 13 and 14, fairly young. And he never th- he, he only basically told them, don't go tell your mom. And he didn't threaten to kill him and all this kind of stuff. He just said, oh, don't, you know, don't tell your mom. And it wasn't the sadomasochistic you know, stuff with Allen at all. He was just, it was like getting him drunk and, and give him drugs for sexual favors kind of thing with Arthur Lee Allen. It wasn't just tie him up and do all this weird stuff and put on costumes, or at least the boys that eventually told their mothers about Arthur Lee Allen. That's how he got caught because they went home and said, oh, by the way, Lee did this weird thing to me. That's how Arthur Lee Allen got caught. But he never threatened those boys. He just said, "Don't tell your mom." He did, you know. This was people have to remember that about Alan. If he's just, you know, dual personality guy that's able to go kill all these people, why did he just tell these boys? Well, just don't tell. You know, he should have. You know, I'll kill you if you tell. I'll kill your mom. You know, and he never ever did that. And that's in the police reports uh, for Arthur Lee Allen. So he doesn't make a good suspect, in my opinion, for the Santa Rosa uh, slayings. He just doesn't. I mean, this is all female victims. Uh, Alan, like I said, or at least by that point, his life was preferring uh, boys over girls, and uh, it wasn't this. It, it, you know, Zodiac's not sadomasochistic. It, 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 you know, as far as the, the the killings were at all, not like the Santa Rosa ones, ones where they were bound, probably tortured in some cases, and then they were dumped in creep beds and, and stuff like this. That just does not line up with Arthur Lee Allen. And I know one of the pieces that Gray Smith trots out about him possibly being tied to uh, the Santa Rosa hitchhiking slings is they found chipmunk hairs on at least one or two of the bodies of the victims in the Santa Rosa slings. And that's never been proven that I've seen. I've never seen a police report with that. It's just something that Gray Smith said, kind of like some of the stuff with the Zodiac that he claimed that was never been able to have been proved, like the painting party and this kind of thing. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. If that was true, it would be interesting because Arthur Lee Allen did keep chipmunks. That's that's a fact. And during that time, he kept them at his trailer in Santa Rosa. So maybe Arthur Lee Allen's crossing paths with, with uh, Fred Manali. I don't know, but it is interesting when you look at some of the stuff with Manali and how he spoke, how he how he wrote. Uh, like I said, he's a creative creative writing instructor there at uh, Santa Rosa Junior College, and you know, it doesn't seem like a mathematical guy at all. I don't see this guy making ciphers or, or knowing how to draft or any of this kind of thing. But uh, you know, he does use the word "I shall," and he uses uh, "What is his name?" and this just all this stuff is out there with Morth. And here's a picture of Manali. I know most of you know what he looks like, but you know, he just doesn't, if any, if he fit any description, it would be the voyeur at Lake Berryessa, maybe, because the girl, the college girls that day said whoever they saw was a good looking guy, and that doesn't fit Arthur Lee Allen at all, and some other people, we, you know, we know, but maybe he's that guy, I don't, I don't know, but he's just interesting to look at some of the things with Fred Manali, and another one is the ad that came out in the San Francisco Chronicle that says Zodiac uh, your partner is in deep real estate. Remember that we talked about that before, and it said, um, "You know, you're you're next," and it's kind of a threat. And when you read that, you don't know if Zodiac wrote it because it says Zodiac, or uh, they're writing it to Zodiac, and it says your partner is in deep real estate, making you think, "Okay, he's dead." And the interesting about that is that ad came out two days after Fred Manali was killed in that head-on collision. So it's like if Fred Manali was the Zodiac's partner, and they're saying, "Hey, your partner's dead now, and you're going to be dead if you don't." confess to uh i can't remember it was like um some kind of Ku Klux clan thing uh, the lord executioner guy or whatever uh in that ad and who knows if that's tied in or not to the deep real estate ad but it is interesting that it came out two days after fred Manali was killed in that that uh head-on auto accident so who knows i mean this guy's interesting there's some stuff that's written about him by a guy named Gian Quasar. I like all this guy's stuff. It's called The Quester Files. He's actually got a Zodiac suspect of his own. He calls Steve. That uh, makes it hard to figure out, but he's uh, writing a book about this guy, Steve. Hey, what's up, Dylan? Good to hear from you, man. Hope you had a good Christmas. So uh, definitely check that out, and I'll read part of this from The Quester Files. And it says, this is all about Manali. He's got like a great, I mean, he just, he does all these different takes on Zodiac related stuff and stuff that connects to Zodiac. So definitely I highly recommend the Quester files by a guy named Gene Quasar, but it says, um, let's consider a few intangibles during high school days. Manali was quite popular in general. Fred Manali reflects the type that would be trusted by local girls. He was known to be a JC teacher. 
He was strong, handsome, and in 1972, he was in his late 30s and still in his prime. He had lived in the area for about 10 years at the time of his death in 1976, so about six years by the time of the crimes. He was also a poet. We all know what they're like. You may think that is unforgivingly English of me, but it is true that the poets are aesthetics. They resonate to country places and creeks. Remember all the victims uh, of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings were found like in creeks or embankments, uh, kind of you know, way off the main roads and stuff in Santa Rosa. He knew the foothills. He also taught at San Quentin, the prison, which is accessed along Sir Francis Drake Boulevard just from Larkspur, where Kim was working and from where she hitchhiked the day she vanished and was murdered. She had been left on Bell Avenue in San Rafael. Manali could have come along and picked her up. She would probably, probably, she would probably have trusted him. Of course, this guy's a, like a well-known uh, creative writing professor at Santa Rosa Junior College. You know, nice-looking guy, 6'3". Uh, I think, you know, back in 1972 or 3, I wouldn't even have thought twice about jumping in a car with this guy. So I think he's a better suspect than people realize, particularly going back to that incident in Illinois that he had when he tried to pick up that, that girl and he was married at the time. He got divorced. And his uh, ex-wife married another professor. I think somebody that was actually his boss, uh, Fred's boss, at Santa Rosa Junior College. He was like the head of the English department or something. She wound up getting remarried to that gentleman. So she remarried her husband's boss. But I don't know what the details of that were. But it's very interesting. I mean, I think Manali needs to be looked at again. And I don't know what's going on with the DNA in this case. But they definitely need to, you know test it and i i you know manali i just think makes a really good suspect here and the stuff with zodiac coming coming in or not could he have known alan or anyone else i don't know but he makes a great suspect for the santa rosa slings for sure i don't really see anything against it of course there was no uh no one reported anyone with a stutter or anything with that i think they were all killed i think one lady did get picked up and managed to survive if i'm not mistaken i'll have to go back and check and i'll do another upload on that but here it's talking about Going on with Quasar stuff, it says, It is a fact, however, that Sonoma County sheriffs have never made a comment on Fred Manali. To what, we sh should, to what should we attribute this? By 1976, three years since the last victim had been found, did the average sheriff not know enough details to realize the significance of the discovery? Or did the clues simply leak back to the sheriffs through independent sources? If all the evidence from the van was first in sheriff custody, I would imagine that Brown would have had more than just two copies of the sketches. It sounds like they only got copies and never had the originals. Brown also said, this guy's what the, the uh, Sonoma Sheriff's Department said, he probably taught Kim. And that's, that's in quotes. He probably taught Kim, which doesn't sound like he or anybody did an official investigation. So they didn't even look into Manali that much after he was killed. They probably, you know, I don't know if they thought, well, this guy's dead. He's not going to be murdering any more hitchhiking girls in Santa Rosa. And they just kind of dropped it. That's the way... From what I've read other things other than this too, which kind of make that same assumption. They just didn't really follow up on this case, and it doesn't seem like they're doing it now. I mean, we're talking about at least seven unsolved murders, and they're not even aggressively still looking into this, which is crazy. And then he goes on to say, Zodiologists have, of course, only considered Fred Benali in terms of being the Zodiac, quickly dismissing him because he was strong, six foot three inches tall, and didn't look anything like the Zodiac composites. That's about as far as it goes. Drew, what's your take on Ralph Spinelli? Um, good question. Uh, Spinelli is a, is, is a tricky guy. I don't know. What I'd like to know is exactly what happened at Spinelli's apartment or his house apartment back in 1958. Of course, that's the story that Ralph Spinelli tells at the beginning of his name was Arthur Lee Allen. It's the first thing in that video. And what's so funny about it, he tells the story about you know, the, the boyfriend of the girl that Spinelli's dancing with. And he gets mad because he finds out that Spinelli was dancing and kissed his girlfriend and uh, comes over and there's some kind of thing or whatever. And they get mad. And then all of a sudden, Arthur Lee Allen shows up. So Arthur Lee Allen is not the boyfriend. And I, I got that wrong like the first time I saw it. I just I get conflated it in my mind. I thought he was talking about Arthur Lee Allen being the boyfriend, but it's not. Uh, Arthur Lee Allen just shows up after the boyfriend to Spinelli's a uh, little back, you know, I think it was like an upstairs apartment or something. He was still living at home with his parents because he was in high school, Spinelli was. And then all of a sudden, Arthur Allen, you know, comes through the door. Like Spinelli said, the door explodes or something, and this giant guy's there. 
Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's really weird about Spinelli. I know he did one of these life transformation deals where he had got older. He had cancer and he fought cancer for a long, long time. He uh, did a lot for, uh, uh, you know, making prisons better and writing about his time in prison because he was, a, you know, obviously he was a convict. He did multiple armed robberies. And that was during the time that, that he claimed that whole story happened with Arthur Lee Allen coming over to his establishment saying, hey, uh, you know, I can go do kills for you. And he's like, you don't believe me. Just wait a little while. And then Allen leaves, comes, you know, comes back. This is after the Paul Stein killing. And then says, hey, what do you think of me now? That whole deal. And... You know, of course, Spinelli says, yeah, I believe you. Now get the hell out of here, that whole story. But I, I don't believe Spinelli. And I think he should have come clean before he died. He, uh, he, uh, God, what, he, you know, Spinelli did a lot of good. I mean, he went back, he got like a, a PhD. He wrote a, that book about uh, his time in prison, which did a lot of good for people. He donated money for prison reform. He was really big into prison reform from being an inmate himself. He was... Uh, a big fan of golf. He loved playing golf and he was uh, just big fan of Jack Nicholas and he got to meet Jack Nicholas and there's photos of Spinelli. He's, uh, you know, he's dressed very nicely, but he's really real thin because he's got cancer. I don't know what type of cancer he had, but it eventually claimed his life. But he, he, he truly seems like this guy that totally changed his life. I mean, this guy was an armed robber, you know, he was you know, mob connected for Vallejo terms. He was really into the, you know, uh, organized crime as far as that went in Vallejo he was at the top of the heap so you know when the deal came up with about Allen he probably found out about Allen somehow and he was using that as bait to get a lighter sentence for the armed robberies he was up for so I think uh, Spinelli probably made that up I, I you know I doubt he even knew Arthur the Allen he probably crossed paths but I doubt he even knew him but it's just I wish Spinelli would have come clean before he died because it does seem like he did a lot of good before he died I wish he had come clean about that story because it, 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 twi it, you know, it twisted a lot of things around. It's kind of what, you know, got Allen back in the spotlight again with Spinelli's story. It had died down a lot till Spinelli came out and told that, that whole story about Allen coming by his bar and offering his services as a hit man. So that's the deal with Spinelli. I really don't know what, what happened with that guy, but I wish he would have, you know, come clean about it before he passed away, but he did a lot of good fortunately before he died. But, uh, one of those things with him, I don't know. I mean, who knows what these guys were doing, but back with, uh, with, uh, Manali, that guy needs some more research. He really does. Oh, you didn't throw me off at all. I like talking about Spinelli. It's like when, uh, Jerome asked me about Panzarella. I like talking about Panzarella too. And I know <laughs> you're waiting for some stuff on that, Jerome. If you're watching, maybe you're asleep. I don't know what time it is in Belgium, but anyway, with Manali, uh, you know, it's pretty much all I have on him. I'm just going to do some more, mainly go find that article about him picking up that girl because that is just, that's, that's everything. If he tried to do that and he would have been younger at the time. And I think around 65, he was in the military for a while in Germany, he actually got married in Germany. Uh, his wife's American. She was from Illinois. I think they went to high school together, but they got married over in Germany when he was, um, active in the military at the time. So I, I definitely have even forgotten about that because that was so long ago that I looked that up where he tried to pick up this girl just off the street, you know, and he didn't know. So if that's true, that really, and that in addition with these sadomasochistic drawings of Kim Allen makes him a great suspect in, in that case. The chipmunk hairs and Arthur Lee Allen, I don't believe it. I think that's graysmithing. Sorry, I do. I don't think that's true. I want to count it said it was squirrels. I, you know, that they found on the bodies or Grace Smith said, and you know, maybe he corrected it later because then he remembered that Arthur the Allen actually had chipmunks. So I don't know if a chipmunk here is the same as a squirrel here, but he needs to be looked at again as far as Santa Rosa hitchhiking slings go, Fred Manali, because there's just too much there. Why would he have drawings of Kim Allen in these, these, these compromised positions like that? And then that's how they were murdered. You know, the sadomasochistic, really twisted uh, torture. Like I said, Kim Allen was um she was strangled over 30 minutes i don't know how they determined that i guess in post-mortem how she you know it was was you know killed over 30 minutes like that it's just really horrific and i mean this is a really really twisted guy and here's manali into all this weird stuff and you combine that with that uh story about him trying to pick up that girl i think there's just more there and i just don't know why they can't if they have a partial DNA sample, at least find one of Manali somewhere. Find a cousin, a brother, whatever. Uh, he didn't have children, but there's somebody out there that they could get a test from Manali, and I just think that guy needs to be looked at 
a little more as far as the Santa Rosa stuff and any Zodiac connection. Who knows? I mean, it is interesting how a lot of his phrases do kind of pop up in the letters. He does use I shall a lot. He did that name. You know, some of the writing looks similar. Some people say it doesn't, but it's worth, you know, it's definitely worth a look. Here's uh, his obituary. I'll read this. And it says, Fre Frederick Manali. Services are Saturday in Rockford, Illinois. That's where he was from for Frederick Manali, 41, Santa Rosa Junior College creative writing instructor who was killed Tuesday night in a grinding head on collision on Highway 12 west of Santa Rosa. A writer and poet, Manali taught classes at SRJC at various times over the last 10 years. He held a bachelor's degree from the University of Illinois and a master's degree from San Francisco State College. In 1972, he was awarded a National Endowment for the Arts Writing Fellowship. This guy was a good writer and, and noted for it. He was a resident of Sonoma County for the last 13 years. He was an Army veteran. Manali is survived by his parents, Irene and Jack Manali of Rockford, Illinois. Brother John Manali, um, Arizona, and a sister, Mary Lou Manelli, Rockford. His former wife, Suzanne Carlson, lives in Santa Rosa. Like I said, his, uh, his former wife was Suzanne Carlson. She got remarried to his former boss, like the head of the English department or something like that. But uh, definitely worth looking into, and I definitely want to go find that old article about where he picked up that girl. It's so interesting. But that's all I got for now. Hope everybody has a happy new year. Thanks for watching.